This is the Innov H5 helmet camera. It's not quite half the price of the GoPro Hero 11 Black, or in this case, Hero 10 Black. But is it as good? Well, let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Now today, I'm talking about the Innov H5 helmet camera. And I'm going to do a real quick unboxing, and then we're going to show you all the stuff that comes in the kit, as well as some of the accessories that are available for this camera. And then we're going to install this on my Cymax 2 helmet and go out and do some actual writing tests. See what the color, what the image stabilization, and just overall, generally, what the picture quality looks like. We're also going to take a look at the app that you can use to uh, update the settings of this camera. Now, I would quickly like to remind you before we get to the unboxing that if you are passionate about motorcycles and you like product reviews like this, I would invite you to take a second to click that little subscribe button right down below this video. And don't forget the notification bell because that way YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. So I appreciate your support. Thanks for subscribing. Now, Let's get on to the unboxing. Well, as you can see, the Innov H5 does come in a very nice quality package. Sure. We're going to open it up here, take a look inside. First thing you notice is the camera body on the left and the battery pack on the right. So when we pull the battery out of the package and first impression is it's very lightweight, it Obviously, it has a plastic body. I can see a USB-C connector. We'll pull the camera out as well. Now, when it comes in the package, it's already been connected to a power, I guess you call this a back. And there's also a little clip mount, which we'll talk more about later. Uh, this just pops right off the camera. We're going to remove this mounting clip and take a closer look at the camera. If we look at the camera as it comes in the package, it has this back on it that has a power cord. It's actually a USB cord, which allows you to connect to a external power bank for power or connect it to your motorcycle if you have a USB connector on your motorcycle. But this back does come off. We'll release these two little clamps that just kind of pull out and then once those are out you can pop this back off of the camera body itself. Now here you can see the USB-C port that's used to connect to the power back and also the micro SD card slot on the other side. So if you want to run on battery power instead of uh, USB power you simply use the battery pack and it connects the exact same way. You just kind of push it together and then close those little chrome clamps and you're ready to go. Now, Innov claims a battery life of five hours when fully charged, which is pretty incredible. And here, if you want to compare the size of the H5 to a GoPro that is in a media mod, this lets you see kind of how it compares. I will tell you it's much lighter than the GoPro. The kit also comes with some additional mounting hardware. There is a small Allen wrench that comes with it so that you can install the mounting clamp and a USB-C charging cable. Here is the remainder of the mounting hardware uh, so that you can mount this to your helmet. This is actually a pretty innovative mounting system, which we'll talk more about later. There is one other option for powering the unit, and that is one that not only has the USB power cable to go to a power bank or to your motorcycle, but it also has a small boom microphone that can fit inside your helmet just in case you want to record your voice as you're riding. I used to see this as an option on their website, but I'm not sure if they included the kit or not. I'll put it on the screen if they do. The kit also includes two of these mounting base plates that can be attached to your helmet. Now, I've gone ahead and installed the adhesive on each of these plastic plates. But it's important to note that one of these is completely flat on the bottom, and the other one does have a slight curve to the surface. 
And here I'm going to clean the area really good with alcohol, and I'm going to attach this mounting plate. Now I have a GoPro plate in front of it, but that's not a problem. I'm going to actually use a small clamp to clamp this down to hold it in place for 24 hours to make sure I get good adhesion. Honestly, the clamp is probably overkill and not necessary. Here you can see I've downloaded the Innov H5 app onto my iPhone. When you open the app for the first time, it's going to start looking for the camera. And until we connect the camera to your smartphone via Wi-Fi, it won't be able to find the camera. So we're going to start by pressing and holding the power button for a couple of seconds till you feel it vibrate. And in a few seconds, you'll see a green light begin to flash. And that's an indication that it is broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. The next step is to go to the Wi-Fi settings on your smartphone and click on Wi-Fi so that you can choose a different network. And the Innov H5 will show up as one of the network choices. When you select this as your desired Wi-Fi network, you will be asked to put in a password, which is 12345678. You can, of course, change that later in settings. Now that your smartphone is connected to the camera's Wi-Fi, you can go back to the Innov H5 app, and the app should now be able to communicate with the camera. And within a few seconds, you should be able to see the image in the app of whatever is coming through the lens of the camera. As you can see here, I just have it sitting on my desk in a stationary position looking at my beautiful Honda Trail 70. You will notice the red dot flashing in the upper left hand corner and that's an indication that the camera is now recording. Whenever you turn on the camera it immediately starts recording whether you're using the app or not. Now you can stop recording by pressing that little red movie camera down there on the left underneath the image and that will stop the recording or you can start recording by pressing it again. So you can start and stop recording using that little red icon. Of course if you want to take a still photo you can click on the little camera icon just to the right of that. To view the photos and video files saved on the SD card in the camera click on the document icon. Clicking on the camera file icon will show you all of the files that are stored on the micro SD card. Now it may take a few seconds if you have a lot of files for these to display little thumbnails and it also shows you the size of each of the files. Now if you want to view an individual file you can click on it and then you'll have other options. Clicking the download button will save the file to your camera roll or on an iPhone to your Photos app. Preview will allow you to play back a video or view a photo. If you wish to delete the file, click the delete button and cancel takes you back to the thumbnail page. From the app's home page, you can also go into settings by clicking on this little gear icon. And this will bring up a pretty extensive set of settings for the camera. Most of these settings are pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few that I would like to go over. And I have actually made some modifications to mine, and I'll kind of show you what I've done. Since I don't plan on using the app while I'm writing, I'm going to set the Wi-Fi to turn off after one minute because having that Wi-Fi continually sending out a signal will tend to eat up the battery life. So I'm setting that to one minute. I'm also going to set my photo resolution to a full 20 megabyte photo to get the best quality possible. This app does allow you to select a variety of video resolutions as well. I'm keeping mine set to 4K 30 frames per second, which is the highest resolution setting. I also have my bitrate set to high for the best quality. I'm also going to set the video file length to the maximum, which is 5 minutes. Now when I opened up the app the first time, it had the camera set to a default of loop recording, as you can see here, and I'm turning that off. 
Now under advanced settings, I'm leaving the vibration switch on. I think that's a nice feature. I'm going to start out with recording volume on two, and I have EIS stabilization turned on instead of distortion correction. It gives you a choice of either or distortion correction or the stabilization. Special effects I'm leaving to original. I set the light source frequency to 60 Hertz instead of 50 because that's more of a standard in North America. I left metering mode to multi-spot, white balance to auto, and I don't have any exposure compensation. But there's all kinds of other things you can set here, so just play around with these settings till you get them the way you want. Now if you scroll down to storage, it allows you to clear the camera's cache, and it also allows you to format the micro SD card where it says formatting. It doesn't really give you a great indication once this is completed, but uh, it will let you know that it has formatted successfully. Now back on the home page, there are some other icons here that let you go to their website, go to a user forum, an FAQ page, and allow you to give them some feedback, but I'm not going to go over those today. I'm ready to put this camera on my helmet and give it a try. So this is what the camera looks like when it's mounted to the right side of my Cymax helmet. I did a pretty poor job of getting the angle. Of course, it's easy to adjust, but you can see the horizon is way off when you look at it uh, through the camera. You see the image here. Uh, my horizon is at quite a bit of an angle. But it uh, actually has a pretty nice image. It's not bad. So as you can tell from this example, the small microphones that are built into the body of the camera really don't pick up that much sound. Now, to be fair, I only have them set to level 2. I think they can go all the way up to level 5, so I did not try that. But on level 2, they pick up hardly any sound. They can't even pick up my voice. So on my very first ride, I'm just going to run around the neighborhood and just kind of see how this image stabilization works. Please try to ignore the fact that the horizon is uh, crooked. <laughs> That's easily fixed by rotating the camera. I just didn't do a very good job. But as you can see, the image quality is pretty good. And the image stabilization is, I would say, decent. Now, unlike a GoPro, you can't really change your field of view. The camera gives you about 120 degrees of visibility. And that's actually pretty good. I'd say it's comparable to the wide setting on a GoPro. I would say the field of view is adequate for a helmet camera. It's fine. I don't have a problem with the 120 degree field of view. I will try to crank up the volume on this video so you can see or hear, I should say, the sound coming through those little microphones built into the camera. Check out the editing. So as you can see or hear, you're not going to be able to do any vocal motor vlogging unless you have the optional boom mic or some other microphone installed. So we're going to go back. I'm going to remove the battery pack and put on the back on the camera that allows me to connect that boom microphone. And I'll just be powering the camera using a portable data bank. So for my second test, I've replaced the battery pack with this USB power and boom mic back. And for power, I have the USB cable plugged into this little USB power bank. And I'm just storing that in my jacket pocket. And I've also installed the included boom microphone on the right-hand side of my HJC Cymax helmet. So let's give it a test. So that my horizon may or should be a little more level. You can't really tell without the phone. I don't want to use the phone to check it. So now let's do a quick ride and let's see how this boom mic on this Unov H5 works for motor vlogging. 
Now I tried to set the audio setting up to three because I tested this in the garage and it sounded kind of quiet. It didn't have a lot of volume so I turned it up to three and I'm just speaking in my normal voice right now. When I tried turning the attenuator down to one and as you can tell I'm getting a lot of wind so I want to see how good this little boom mic does at blocking the wind and uh, if so this might be a really nice moto vlogging solution so i have to say i think the boom mic does a fairly good job the image stabilization is not as good as a gopro obviously but better than some other cameras i've tested the colors are a little bit more washed out than what you get on the gopro but that can also be adjusted in post in editing so now that I've tested the two different ways to power this Innov H5 and I've tested the different microphone options, let's go back to the studio and I'll tell you what I think of this camera. Okay, so now having ridden with this on my helmet uh, for a few rides and testing it out, what do I think of the Innov H5? Well, I think it's kind of an interesting camera. What I do like is I like the battery life. They say it will go up to five hours, and I have no reason to dispute that. I have not tested the battery life, so I can't swear to the fact that it will last five hours. But the fact that this does not have a screen uh, probably helps with that battery life. You know, the GoPro has the rear facing and the front facing screen and that screen takes up a lot of power now granted it will shut off after a period of time but uh, that still does take power away from the gopro and there's no way you're going to get five hours of battery life on a gopro you'd be lucky to get an hour to an hour and a half on a gopro I also really like the mounting system, this little clamp style system. It's very, very easy to get on and off. Uh, you just leave the clamp on your helmet, obviously, and it just snaps right in. And then when you're done with your ride, you just basically unclip it. It comes right out. Yet it still feels secure when you're riding. It doesn't feel like it's just going to go flying off. I also like... I have it on the helmet right now, but I also like that new mounting system that has the 360 degree rotation. That's a great system. I also like the fact the way they've designed this to be a one button solution. It's very, very simple to operate. You basically turn it on by holding the button down and it starts recording. When you're done recording, you just hold the button down for a couple of seconds. It will vibrate to let you know that it's turning off. If, as you're recording video, if you want to take a still picture of something, you just tap the button, hold it down for like a second, and it will make an audible sound like a camera shutter, and it takes a picture up to 20 megabyte pixel. Oh, I'm sorry, 20 megabyte photo. Now, as far as other options, I like the fact that you can easily remove this battery. Even though this little clamp can be tricky to get up sometimes, as it is right now, be a little finicky. But I think with time, that will probably break in and be easier. And then this just unplugs. You can tell there is a seal inside the camera. Uh, to keep it waterproof so this they do say this is waterproof which is another nice feature if you remove that you can then use the optional back to just power this using a power bank like this one here which is a usb power bank this is a 10,000 milliamp hour i'm not exactly sure how long that would last but it would certainly last longer than the battery pack and if you have a USB-A style cable or connector on your motorcycle, you can plug this into that and you can power the camera indefinitely. And when you have this uh, USB power connector on the back of the camera, I mean, the camera literally weighs almost nothing. I mean, it's much lighter than a GoPro. I also like the way that they store the micro USB card. I think it's much easier to get access to this than it is the GoPro. But what about quality? 
Well, the, the image quality is not going to be as good as it is on a GoPro. This is a $500 some odd camera. Okay, you can't expect a $269 camera to give you the same quality as you would with this. But I would say this camera does put out better image quality than the Cine 50S for less money. So if you don't need the communicator, you just need a helmet camera, and you don't want to spend $500 on a GoPro, this might be a very good option. I would say the image quality is good, not great, but probably good enough for motovlogging. Also, the loop recording feature is very nice. They also give you an optional back that you can purchase on their website, which not only has the USB power plug, where you can plug it into a power bank or your motorcycle, but it also has a boom mic connector with a boom mic. If you're going to talk and motor vlog and actually talk while you're riding, uh, that's a great feature. The boom mic works pretty well, I think. I think we tested it. I tried using it also with my other mic. didn't work so good, but it does work good with their boom mic, and it's easy to install. So there you have it. There, I'm going to do more long-term testing with this. I will be using this kind of as a backup camera to my GoPro, and I will be doing more uh, long-term testing on this Innov. I think I'm pronouncing that correct because they said the, the name of the company came from Innovate. The only thing I do have a concern with is this little kind of uh, connecting mechanism here because that seems to can be a little hard to get open sometimes. But I'm sure with time, maybe that will loosen up and not be so stiff. God, there we go. Maybe I'm just not used to it. Anyway, uh, that's my review of the N of H5. If you have any questions, put it in the comments down below. If you've used an N of H5, put those comments down below as well. And I'll also include links in the description of this video where you can order this camera if you're interested. So anyway, thanks again for watching today. If you liked this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. That really does help our YouTube rankings. And I will uh, look forward to seeing your comments, and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Reviews.